we will continue our discussion on tokamak. We shall discuss tokamak operation. In this, I will discuss basic elements of plasma confinement and tokamak operation, the parameter regime of tokamak, inductive current drive and ohmic heating in tokamak. Well, my presentation will be primarily based on a book by John Wesson, Tokomex, and also I will refer to an article by Ann Fish, Theory of Current Drive in Plasma, published in Reviews of Modern Physics. I think let me begin with the basic configuration of a tokamak which looks like this is a toroid and the toroid has a magnetic field which is in this direction I will call it the toroidal magnetic field B phi and it also carries a current plasma current in the phi direction I call as I p the plasma current. Typical value of magnetic field in tokamak is around 4 tesla to about 100 tesla and if you examine the cross section of a tokamak then there is excess a magnetic field produced by the azimuthal current or the toroidal current the magnetic field will be in this direction this we call as polaridal magnetic field BP. Some people call this as B theta also. So, this is the basic configuration and if you look at the any line of force we define what we call as the magnetic surface. So, if I plot this cross section of the tokamak like this. So, the tokamak goes like this little extended and then any line of force will move on a surface. This is the line of force which will move on a surface of constant minor radius. Well, not constant minor radius, but it will move on a flux surface. For the sake of simplicity, one can visualize as if the flux surfaces are circular, then this will move on a circle, on a, on a, on a not a circle, but on a toroid of constant radius, minor radius, every line of force. And uh, the basic elements of tokamak operation, we must keep always in view the following elements. Number one, we talked about the Lawson criteria. which essentially implies that the plasma, the power output from a fusion device P out must exceed or be equal to power loss. Now, power loss is essentially written as 3 by 2 T if T is the temperature of electron ion plasma, then this is the average kinetic energy of a particle and there are 2 n particles per unit volume, n is the number of electrons per unit volume and same number is the number of ions, deuterium tritium ions. Then this is the total energy of particles per unit volume. If the volume of the plasma is V, then this is the total energy contained in the plasma and if the energy relaxation time is tau E, then so much energy is lost in so much duration. So, this is called the power loss rate, where V is the volume of the plasma and as far as the power input is concerned, the power output is concerned, well that number of nuclear reactions that take place per unit time per deuterium particle will be 
number of tritium atoms per unit volume into fusion cross section into drift velocity of deuterium not drift rather thermal velocity of deuterium. So, this is effectively the collision frequency of fusion frequency per particle and if there are n deuterium particles per unit volume and V is the plasma volume and the energy produced per nuclear reaction is E f then this must be equal or of this order. This is primarily the Lawson criteria and this gives you if I take n d is equal to n by 2 the number of electrons electron density divided by 2 and n t also is equal to electron density by 2 then this expression this inequality rather leads to the criteria that the product of density and energy confinement time should exceed typical this should be of the order of 10 to 14 per centimeter cube into second at a temperature T of the order of 10 keV. So, this is a important condition we should always keep in view and typical operator operation densities of tokamak are around 10 to 14 per centimeter cube. So, n is typically 10 to 14 or sometimes 10 to 13 few times 10 to 13 electrons per centimeter cube. So, tau must exceed one second this is the minimum that is required. Another important consideration is the ignition criteria the ignition problem. which implies that the alpha particles produced in fusion reaction. So, the energy the power produced by the alpha particle must exceed the power loss. This P alpha is the same as P out with the only difference that rather than using the total fusion energy which is 17.6 MeV one should have only the fusion energy corresponding to the alpha particle. So, P alpha is the same thing as P out multiplied by energy released in the form of uh, with the alpha particle divided by energy total energy released in the fusion reaction. This is 3.5 MeV, this is 17.6 MeV, so, this ratio is around 1 fifth or so. So, if I put this condition here then what you get is n tau turns out to be let me just write down this n tau e and temperature when temperature is expressed in kilo electron volt this must exceed around 3 into 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube into keV into second where T is in keV if I choose this to be 10 keV temperature then this turns out to be 3 into 10 to 14 n tau is 10 to 3 into 10 to 14 per centimeter cube into second. So, these are two important requirements for ignition ignition implies that one does not require the to sustain the fusion reactions one does not require any external heating source. The plasma can sustain itself the fusion products like the alpha particle which is are released in the fusion reaction are able to sustain the burn. So, one must keep this in view. So, one parameter I mentioned to you was the density in tokamak operations this is around 10 to the power 14 per centimeter cube.
and temperature we are having of the order of 10 keV which is about 10 to the power 8 degrees Kelvin and confinement time we want to exceed 1 second. Well, this is one important consideration. Now, if you look at the a reactor, tokamak as a reactor, what you will envisage is like this that well the cross section of a tokamak is really not a circular close to circle but not really circular i can denote, denote like this this is like this this is the plasma in a tokamak so this is the cross section of the plasma near the minor at the minor radius and surrounding this is a blanket that you would employ to absorb the neutrons. So, let me draw a blanket here. So, it is a plasma here, this is a blanket here. This blanket is chosen of a compound of lithium because you would like to use the neutrons for two purposes. One to absorb the neutron and extract energy from the neutron in the form of heat. Secondly, the blanket can be used to produce tritium which is required as a fuel in photocomax. So, the plasma is here. Let me just write this plasma is here. It is all plasma here. And then outside the blanket is a shield because some residual neutrons you would like to remove from the system so that they do not go go to the superconducting coils that produce the magnetic field. So this is I will call as the shield. And then there are a toroidal field coil. Let me just note this. This is the toroidal field coil. So, this is a toroidal field coil which is superconducting coil and let me denote this as the shield. this entire thing actually this is let me just mention this is shield and this is toroidal field coil or superconducting coil. Blanket is contains some compound of lithium usually lithium LiO2 is used. So, when neutrons bombard this, they produce tritium. So, the, this is uh, the entire structure is has a you know this goes all around. So, let me draw a picture of this. Just a second, let me draw a simpler picture of this for the toroidal field coils. This is the cross sectional view of a to to tokamak. So, if you really go all around then the tokamak is like this, this cross section is like this and then this goes and these field coils are like these starting from somewhere here going like this. Then there will be field coil here, which goes like this.
and tokome goes all, all, all around. So, there is a current in these field coils like this which produces a magnetic field in this direction B5. So, tokomek has this kind of configuration several field coils around the torus that will produce a B5 typically of the order of 4 to 10 tesla and inside the between the field coils and the plasma lies or rather you must have inside the vacuum vessel you must have the blanket shield and the shield to protect the system from or rather to protect the superconducting coils from neutrons which are produced in the system. Neutrons cannot be absorbed in the plasma only alpha particles are to be absorbed in the plasma and consequently size of the plasma should be substantially large. So, that the alpha particles before they reach the walls of the vessel or end the edge of the plasma they are able to deposit their energy and these particles are quite energetic 3.5 MeV is the energy of alpha particles. So, you require plasma size to be significantly large to, ab to be able to slow down those particles and absorb energy from them. And uh, typically major radius of the plasma the total big, big radius of the torus is around 1 to 1.5 meter and the ratio of minor radius to major radius is called the aspect ratio this could be like one third one fourth one third typically. Well an important parameter in this is called poloidal magnetic field and we had talked about this B poloidal is typically has to be so strong that the larmer radius of say deuterium or tritium due to the poloidal magnetic field which I define as thermal velocity of deuterium divided by E B poloidal upon mass of deuterium this is called the larmer radius of deuterium if there were no toroidal magnetic field and the only poloidal magnetic field was present. Then for plasma confinement in order to avoid the curvature drift and grad B drifts to cause charge separation we wanted this to be much less than the minor radius of hitokomek. And uh, if you work it out and also if you remember that poloidal magnetic field is related to toroidal current I p typically as mu 0 magnetic permeability of free space into plasma current divided by 2 pi a where a is the minor radius of tokomax. If you put this in these numbers in there then what really you require you require a current in excess of 1 mega ampere joint European torus tokome called jet had a current I p of the order of 7 mega ampere. So, we are really requiring a very huge current in the system in the in the plasma several mega ampere current we require to produce adequate polaridal magnetic field to achieve plasma confinement and this current is not uniform this current as I mentioned when I was discussing the grad Shafronov equation for plasma equilibrium we found that the current has a typical profile maybe I would say that J phi can be taken to be some constant into 1 minus R square by A square this sort of current profile we have it may have different variations, but this is a typical profile. Another important quantity in tokomek operation is called safety factor. Denoted by Q 
and this is an important parameter which is responsible or in terms of which one can talk about the MHD stability of the system. So, one has to choose a proper Q profile and this is defined something like this. In a tokamak as I mentioned that if I choose this as the cross section of a tokamak and this is the direction toroidal direction phi direction then the lines of force move on the surface. They start from here they will go around it and then they will come back. So, what happens when a line of force moves then after making some displacement in phi direction it will come back on the same point in the polydial plane. So, suppose this is another polydial plane here and it is started from some value it arrives same point here after making a rotation. The angle this is I measure the angle from here this is the center and then I go from here this is the distance I call delta phi. So, delta phi is the displacement in the direction of phi this direction I call as phi direction for a line of force. So, that it arrives at the same location in the polydial plane same point in the polydial plane and I call this q as this delta phi upon 2 pi. Let me define delta phi again. The lines of force moves on a flux surface. So, if you are cutting the tokamak in the in a plane perpendicular to phi at many places and find out the location of the line of force. Then the line of force which had some location in one polydial plane will arrive at the same location in the polydial plane after traveling a distance delta phi. Now, the lines of force depend on the toroidal magnetic field. So, if you are moving a distance delta phi then the toroidal magnetic field dis displacement in the phi direction is r times delta phi. If the angular displacement is delta phi and the distance is r then the displacement in the phi direction will be r delta phi and the displacement in the polydial direction I call d s or delta s this will be 2 pi a. So, d s is equal to because it has completed one circle the line of force has gone gone around once. So, 2 pi a is the displacement and this should be equal to the ratio of toroidal magnetic field divided by the polydial magnetic field. Some people write this b theta. So, from here delta phi one can calculate and q turns out to be let me just write down the value of q that you get from here is equal to r b phi upon capital R into B polyoidal. Please note that B polyoidal is 0 at R equal to 0. So, this has some constant value at R equal to A this also this has some constant a, a typical value. So, there is some variation of Q with R, but less than linear it is not like linear variation because B p changes with R. So, at R is equal to A where A is the edge of the plasma this is equal to this turns out to be typically 2 pi a square b phi upon mu 0 i p into r where I have put the value of b p in terms of current plasma current and at a small r is equal to a at that point. So, this is the typical q of the plasma which is around 2 3 or something. So, one should choose a proper ratio of a by r called aspect ratio in compliance with the plasma current and toroidal magnetic field. Well, at some general point r 
Q can be expressed in terms of a plasma current. I do not think I want to in go in those details. So, these are the some important considerations in designing a tokamak that one should choose B phi such that B square by 2 mu 0 which is called magnetic pressure this must exceed substantially the plasma pressure. The ratio of plasma pressure to magnetic pressure is known as beta of the plasma and beta has to be much less than 1 if you want to have to avoid instabilities MHD instabilities. So, beta of the plasma which is defined as P kinetic pressure of the plasma upon magnetic pressure upon 2 mu 0 this has to be substantially less than 1 and maybe 0.2 or something and this puts a condition on BP because pressure is anti product of density and temperature which we have already specified temperature has to be 10 keV density has to be 10 to 14. So, B phi has to satisfy this condition and that is why I say that at least a few tesla magnetic field is required 4 tesla, 5 tesla, 10 tesla etcetera. Tokamak for example, Alcator tokamak is having about 10 tesla magnetic field and other tokamak have little less magnetic field, but typical range would be like between 4 and 10 tesla magnetic field. Well, the issue is twofold. How are you going to provide a current to the plasma? drive a current in the plasma and how are you going to heat the plasma. The primary heating and current drive is accomplished by a transformer action. So, let me schematically demonstrate this. Suppose I choose a frame iron frame like this. choose a iron frame like this well like this and this is the outer side of the frame suppose I choose a iron frame like this and then I have a primary winding on this like this. and pass a current AC current in this coil. This will produce a magnetic flux that will be linked with the entire frame. Now, you bring in a tokamak whose cross section is here like this and this goes like this. like this. So, tokamak becomes secondary of the transformer. This is the primary coil of the transformer and plasma having a very high conductivity higher than that of any solid or any material any metal. It will induce a EMF that will induce a current in the system. So, suppose the magnetic flux linked with well please examine if you are seeing tokamak from top it will look like this and the lines of force that are produced by you know in the central region in the in the iron core suppose the lines of force are going like this. So, then the lines of force I would say they are So, there is a flux linked in the central region here. So, if you examine the entire torus, then in the center of the torus there exists a magnetic flux linked to the circuit and whenever this flux changes with time, so magnetic flux linked with the torus, I will call this as phi. 
when this flux changes with time then emf is induced and emf which i call as v becomes is equal to or i think i should call something else because v i am calling as volume so let me remove this symbol here i used e m f as e this quantity becomes is equal to minus delta phi by delta t so as long as you can pass a time dependent current in the primary of the transformer the okay. flux linked with the torus will change with time and emf will be produced and this emf will induce a current in the tokamak in compliance with the following equation if i consider tokamak to have a self inductance l self inductance of the toroid or tokamak because whenever you pass a current in the plasma is like a coil so whenever you pass a current in the plasma there will be some magnetic flux linked by this current plasma current phi was not the flux produced by this current phi was the flux produced by the current in the transformer and i'm talking of the flux produced by the plasma current if it is induced here then the so i will call as phi p the plasma current produces a flux linked with the circuit and this will be equal to l into ip so this is how you define self inductance of a plasma toroid and then the equation that governs the current would be l di by dt ip is the plasma current so l dip by dt plus resistance of the plasma rs into ip plus this is equal to emf e as i mentioned that flux must change with time only then this emf is produced for the sake of simplicity to have a better appreciation i will consider this to be like e0 e to the power minus i omega t in actual operation this is not a sinusoidal function of time the you continuously increase the current in the primary of a transformer so this is a linear function of time or something or some function of time but for the sake of mathematical analysis which is very reasonable to reveal physics of this process let me choose this then the solution turns out to be as if ip is equal to some quantity say alpha exponential of minus i omega t some quasi steady state solution i can write down and replace ddt by minus i omega so this gives me ip is equal to emf that you are introducing divided by rs plus minus i omega l this is the impedance due to the inductor inductive part this is the resistive part total is the impedance of the plasma for typical pyramid well let me estimate this rs in terms of plasma conductivity rs this is the plasma resistance which is equal to plasma resistivity which is one upon conductivity multiplied by length of the plasma which is 2 pi r and divided by the area of cross section of the plasma through which the current flows which is pi a square and sigma is equal to electron density into charge square upon mass of the electron into collision frequency so this becomes 2 r upon a square my main point was to tell you that the resistivity of the resistance of the plasma is proportional to collision frequency nu 
and collision frequency is a function of electron temperature. So, this quantity goes as temperature of the electron to the power minus 3 by 2. This is an important dependence. So, please note that at low temperature plasma is very resistive, but as the temperature goes up then plasma becomes less and less resistive. However, at any temperature if up to a few keV if you compare these two quantities R s is still less than omega L and L you can essentially estimate order of magnitude estimation of L you can easily have that if I have a current I p in the system then the magnetic field at the center you can easily write and if I do this I get phi p typically of this order let me just find out. So, phi p is typically of the order of mu 0 i p upon 2 into r. So, inductance of the plasma is typically equal to mu 0 into major radius divided by 2 and then just you can calculate the value of omega L and you find that omega L if I choose the time like uh, time of evolution of EMF like a second then this is like 2 pi upon 1 second which is like 2 pi by 6 and if I put multiply by L this turns out to be orders of magnitude bigger than resistance. So, this is much bigger than R s as a result the induced plasma current I p is typically equal to E divided by I omega L multiplied by 1 actually minus time I let me take common and then this becomes 1 plus I R S upon omega L. I think this is minus sign here. So, this is the plasma current dependence on this this is small. So, I p usually is pi by 2 out of phase with the induced EMF. However, important quantity is the heating. So, first of all you get the plasma current and you want this current to be typically of the order of a few mega ampere and hence this proper calculation if you reveal it will reveal that E does not have to be very large because omega L still is a very small quantity. Omega L you can just ensure that L has a very small quantity mu 0 which is 4 pi 10 to minus 7 in MKS units R is above the of the order of 1 in MKS units. So, this L being a very tiny quantity of the order of 10 to minus 7 or 10 to minus 6 this becomes very large even if EMF is 10 volt or 100 volt or some 10, 20, 30 volts. So, this I p if I want of the order of omega ampere omega if I choose like 2 pi L is 10 to minus 6 then EMF does not have to be very large. So, few tens of volt will do the job. Let us see what is the consequence of this term. An important quantity is the plasma heating rate. Heating rate is defined as the system if the system has a resistance R s then the heating rate H is the product of real part of I P into real part of EMF. I have used complex notations otherwise this is actual current multiplied by actual EMF the product of the two is known as the heat dissipation per unit volume or rather the work done by the EMF per unit volume not heat dissipation. Uh, however, the time average of this quantity is important which is called heat dissipation per unit volume heat dissipation rate. So, time average of this quantity if I want then this can be written as half 
real part of I p into E m f complex conjugate plus I p into E m f. This identity we had proved once that real part of a complex number into real part of another complex number is always equal to half real part of the product of the numbers complex numbers plus product of one number into complex conjugate of the other number like this. But both are varying in time exponential minus i omega t. So, time average of this turns out to be 0 while the exponentials will cancel here. So, time average of this is 0. So, if I take time average heating rate I can forget then the last term and I get h is equal to half real part of i p into e star and if I put the numbers there then it turns out to be i p was this becomes e star or e m f square upon 2 omega square l square into r s. In terms of current if I wanted to write then this is nearly equal to i p square into r s divided by 2. So, the heating rate is proportional to r s the resistance of the plasma which scales as temperature to the power minus 3 by 2 electron temperature to the minus 3 by 2. This is a very serious matter that this ohmic heating is important when the plasma temperature is low. So, when you are creating a plasma initially you produce a plasma in the tokamak by some RF discharge, but that the temperature of the plasma is only few electron volt. Then you use this induction effect and you or transformer effect and you raise the temperature. So, as the temperature builds up heating is very effective in the beginning, but as the temperature goes up it becomes less and less effective. And just by reaching a temperature of the order of 1 or 2 kilo electron volt this becomes quite ineffective. Now, this is a very serious matter how will you heat the plasma from 1 or 2 kilo electron volt to 10 kilo electron volt that is a very major issue. And we have to provide some supplementary or auxiliary scheme of heating. Well, this is a very serious matter and I think I am going to talk about it separately. Nevertheless, I just would like to mention that there are two schemes of auxiliary heating that have been tried and have been tried very successfully. One of them is known as the radio frequency heating in which you use electromagnetic waves from outside into the system. You rather you introduce electromagnetic power into the system and somehow those waves have to be chosen properly so that they can heat the electrons or ions. If they can heat ions that is even preferable because it is the thermonuclear fusion uh, in which deuterium and tritium ions are involved not the electrons. And secondly people are employing neutral beams. Electron beam or ion beams cannot be used because they cannot penetrate into the plasma perpendicular to the magnetic field because there is already a very strong toroidal magnetic field and one cannot launch charged particles perpendicular to the magnetic field. However, one can use neutral particles so people use neutral beams for this purpose. However, before I close today's discussion I would like to mention something about the plasma current. When you are talking about current I p of the order of or bigger than 1 mega ampere several mega ampere current we are talking about voltage or E m f loop voltage may be only few tens of volts, but the current is very huge. The question arises is every electron contributing to the current or only some electrons are contributing to the current. Now, let us examine the character of current or rather the electron response to 
a DC field of field of the of low frequency field. I am talking about that rate of change of momentum of a particle m dv by dt in the presence of a field electric field in the system is equal to the electric force on the particle minus m v this is the average momentum drift momentum of the particle multiplied by the collision frequency this is the average momentum they lose per collision. This collision frequency depends on the magnitude of velocity which you can consider to be a sum of random velocity plus drift velocity. Now, whenever you apply a high electric field, this is the momentum the electron as is getting from the electric field per second and this is the momentum it is losing. So, in the quasi steady state what you have is that they balance each other and consequently you get velocity is equal to E e upon m nu. Please note the electrons which have a larger value of collision frequency which are very hot they will acquire a larger drift velocity and this is important because if the drift velocity becomes comparable or larger than thermal velocity this nu itself will depend on velocity. So, if I can plot a quantity here collisional momentum loss per second this is called m v nu plot m v nu as a function of particular velocity v. Please remember that collision frequency nu is proportional to 1 upon v to the power 3. Now, this v is sum of drift velocity plus random velocity v total I mean let me call it v total. So, initially when drift velocity is low v is the drift velocity or average velocity of particles then this in quantity will increase. But as drift velocity becomes comparable to thermal velocity or larger then this dependence of this function on v will appear through nu also and this quantity will decrease. So, this will start decreasing. That is a serious matter because this is the maximum momentum loss an electron can have in a plasma. You cannot have higher than this momentum loss, but if you apply electric field larger this is the momentum gain by the electron from the electric field and if it cannot lose that much momentum in via collisions then the electron will be continuously accelerated. Such electrons I mentioned earlier are called runaway electrons. The electrons for which this momentum loss is not balanced by the momentum gain they are called runaway electrons. And in tokamak when you apply the kind of fields by transformer action those fields render electrons quite some electrons which had initially large velocities they become runaway electrons because for them the drift velocity the collisionality is very weak and they are the ones which carry large part of the current. So, the most of the current in tokamak is carried by electrons with energy electron energy greater than or of the order of 100 kilo electron volt. Now, that is a very big advantage because if your current is carried by low energy electrons for them collision frequency is large and this term is very huge this momentum loss is large. However, if the current is carried so momentum is last, last means that the electric field is doing more work. The work done by the electric force in making an electron move is given by H is equal to the electrical force 
into drift velocity, particle velocity. This is the work done by the electric force in making the current driven to drive the current. So each particle if it has to acquire a drift velocity and move, then this is the work done by the electric field on this. And you would like to have for a given current this quantity to be minimum. So, what really is happening here that the particles with larger velocity have less damping rate because this quantity is equal to minus m nu v and v dot v so v square and this nu goes as 1 upon v cube, v cube. So, this quantity decreases it means more the energetic particles less the energy wastage in driving a particular current and that is a important issue. So, one clue that we get from our discussion is that it will be preferable in a tokamak though the average temperature of the plasma is like 10 kilo electron volt, but you would like to have current driven by energetic electrons which have energies like 100 kilo electron volt. So, 10 times the average energy, the energy of these particles should be of that order that will be much preferable, much, prefer, uh, much, much preferred and for this purpose people realize that waves can play this job better. Because in transformer action actually you are really driving a substantial part of current by the low energy electrons and some part of current by the high energy electrons. However, in if you want to do this process by using radio frequency waves, then the waves can preferentially heat the or give their momentum and energy to energetic particles and can drive a current. I would like to give you an assessment of what kind of RF powers will be required for a current drive. Let me give you an estimate, more details we will discuss in our next, next lecture. So, the issue that we are addressing is that we have a tokamak. and I want to drive a current by using a radio wave. Suppose I want the electrons to go in this direction oh sorry current to flow in this direction I want the electrons to travel in the opposite direction and I want my wave to launch my wave so that they come in this direction and they deposit momentum on the particles and particle then electrons continue to move in this direction this is the motion of electrons this is the IP the plasma current that I want to sustain or I want to drive. So, this is my wave that has to come from here this is my wave. The momentum of the wave has to be having a component in the toroidal direction so that it deposits the momentum on the particles. Well, in order to have some feel for it how much current is required how much momentum transfer is required let us see. Suppose I consider electron moving in a circular path and uh, the velocity of the electron is v phi. Suppose consider an electron with velocity v phi moving then this electron will go around in a time T uh, well uh, T I am calling temperature. So, let me call this time of travel as T uh, T travel T T r. This will be equal to 2 pi r the distance travel in one circle divided by V phi. So, an electron will take so much time to go around the torus and the current it will induce is I will be equal to charge of the electron which is E magnitude wise divided by T T r travel time which is typically equal to E V phi upon 2 pi r. So, this is the current each electron will produce. Now, the question arises how much power 
how much momentum it loses via collisions because that much momentum has to be replenished by the wave. So, it loses a momentum per second momentum loss per second if it suffers a collision then in a collision it loses momentum m v phi and if the collisions are nu per second this is the momentum it will lose per second. So, so much momentum should be provided to it means so much work will be force momentum per loss per second is called the so much force must be exerted on the particle per second or so much momentum has to be replenished. So, work done by the by this force which is providing so much momentum by the agency providing for this momentum loss. will be force which is mv phi nu multiplied by the distance traveled per second in the direction of force which is v phi. So, what you require is this is the heat loss rate or work done w and the current I gave to you was I. So, for driving a I current the work that you do it turns out to be equal to E V phi upon 2 pi r was the value of I that I wrote per particle and work that you do is m nu V phi square and this is called the figure of merit for current drive by a radio frequency wave. You may note here one V phi will cancel out this quantity scales as 1 upon nu into V phi square v phi and nu goes as 1 upon v phi to the power 3. So, this goes as v phi square means more energetic particles are preferred for current drive. If you want to have a higher efficiency of driven current to power loss then you must have the current carried by particles with large velocity total velocity. I think we will continue our discussion on current drive and heating in the last in the in next lecture which will be probably the concluding lecture on tokamak thank you very much